So last thing we're going to get a word on from this section is variance and standard deviation, where the formulas here are actually very similar to what we had with the data points in chapter two. We have that the variance is given by the square of the deviations multiplied by now the probabilities acting like the, so what I'm looking for, sample size in this case, or the population size for that matter, where for this we don't have the distinction between S and Sigma, we just look at Sigma. And then if we want to talk about the standard deviation, we take the square root of the variance. And I'll say that for much the same reason that I don't talk about the standard deviation of a data set in very much detail, I'm not going to talk about this stuff computationally in very much detail. You'll see what it looks like briefly, but understand that it's not, in my opinion, the best way to use your time. So for example, looking back at that data on passive and aggressive traits, we could go through the work of computing that somewhat by hand, but as you can see from the table that's up here, it would take a little bit when truth be told, I still think that running this stuff in the calculator is both better practice for you guys in terms of knowing how to use computational software and also a better use of your time in general. But the long and short of it is, however you choose to get those values, you should end up with a variance that is approximately equal to 1.616 and a standard deviation of approximately 1.3. And that's all we have for 4.1. Next week, when you get down to 4.2, we'll talk about a specific kind of discrete distribution, the binomial distribution, where we're looking at probabilities associated to events where we only have two outcomes, either something happens or it doesn't. But those are 4.2 things. Those are next week problems. I'll see you then.